Hello, I'm on vacation and guess what? I brought a 3D printer with me. So let's take a look at it. This, this is a box, the, the printer is actually in the box. So let's, let's get it out. So it is called the Positron and you may be asking yourself, why would I bring a 3D printer on a family vacation with me? And that's a very reasonable question. One, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to 3D printing, not the 3D printing nerd, he's, he's another guy. It's a hobby of mine and it's obviously the, uh, the main focus of my channel. So anytime I get a chance to show family members my hobby, I take advantage of it. And the Positron is probably one of, if not the best printer to kind of do that because it packs down so small. Big printers are all the rage right now. Everyone wants to go big, but the problem with big is big is hard to move. Having a small compact printer that you can bring on the go does have some advantages. The Positron, it packs down pretty small. It fits in this entire nice Pelican-esque case and it goes together pretty quick. So I'm gonna be talking about it while I put it together to show you how easy it is to do. So you gotta take out your bed. Along with the bed, you also have the controller. This is the brains of the printer. So you have the touch screen here. It also has a Raspberry Pi CM4 in there to control clipper and you have your spool holders. We have power cables, USB cable, and the power brick. This version of the Positron has an external power supply. Now there are some community mods out there that do use an internal power supply. I'm honestly not a huge fan of those designs, uh, namely for the fact that to get the power supply inside the printer, you pretty much have to remove the shielding of the power supply. That is a potential safety issue to some people. So if that's a route you wanna go when building your own, feel free to go ahead, but Darby Dragons. So as you can see here, the printer itself is very small. It, this actually will fit in the box your average spool of filament comes in. So if you have one of those spools of Polymaker filament, take the filament out of the box, you could put this right back in the box. But as you can see, it, it I don't have it in a filament box. Why is that? Well, quite simply, several reasons actually. Uh, one, you don't have enough room in the filament box to fit everything else that you need to go along with the printer. The screen, the power supply, et cetera. Also, let's be honest, if you're traveling, a small cardboard box is not gonna provide the best safety when it comes to protecting your 3D printer. So in the event that say you drop it, you don't really have a lot of padding there. So to put this together, it's actually quite simple. You have two screws here, you take those both out and you raise up the Z axis. As you're raising the Z axis, you may wanna take out your bed holder. We can plug this cable in here. This provides power to the bed along with the thermistor connector. We take our big knob, screw that in the back here, and that will lock our Z vertically, keep everything aligned. And then we take our bed holder here. So you can see there's a bit of play there. And as you tighten that nut, everything becomes locked into place. We have some cables here. One of them is for your Bowden tube, which this is a Bowden setup. So we plug this in here. Uh, it provides a USB connection to the tool head. So we only have to run four wires to the tool head, uh, two communication wires, two power wires connect our bone and tube to the extruder. That is that. And the cool thing with the bed, it's glass and it is a heated bed. So you can actually see your first layer being laid down. Now, the only downside with a glass bed is you do have to keep it clean. Now you could put um, additives on the bed itself, um, glue stick, vision miner, etc. Next up, we have our screen here. Now, again, the screen is also the brains of the printer. There is a controller board in here, but this is running clipper. So you do have a Raspberry Pi uh, as the brains of the printer. And we have this nice little touch screen here so that just opens up like that plug the USB-C cable in there plug the other end into the screen now one of the things I would have liked to see is a some sort of locking USB cable because unfortunately if you're showing this printer off and you're moving the screen around if this cable ever pops out uh, the printer pretty much shuts right down because it loses control, because it lost the connection to its brain. You, you kind of need your brain for it to work. Then we have our power brick here that plugs in on this side. And then we have our spool holders. Now, unfortunately, this comes to the part of the unboxing and setup where movie magic is gonna come into play because where I am right now, I actually don't have a, uh, a power connector. I was really hoping a, a company wants to send me one of those uh, power stations, those battery power stations, but I don't have that right now. And where I'm at right now, outside here, I don't have power. It's a really nice filming location, but not a really good location to run a 3D printer. So I'll cut in some scenes of this thing printing. To get this going, it's actually quite simple. 
you get your spool of filament that goes into your extruder. And then what you would do is you would just hit the load macro and it would suck the filament in and get everything ready to go. So that is the Positron right there, all set up, ready to print. And if I wasn't yapping doing a YouTube video, you could set this up a lot quicker than I did. So who is this printer for? I'm just gonna come out right now and say, this printer is not for everyone. There are some unfortunate downsides to this style of printer, namely the fact that this is definitely not a workhorse machine. It is a new design. It's pretty well baked. It's version 3.2 of the Positron. There have been some pretty major revisions to it over its design cycle. Uh, but this is not really the type of machine I would personally put in like a print farm. You could probably do quite a lot of printing on it, but I got a feeling it might be a little finicky once you start getting up into a couple thousand hours of printing. It, it is definitely more of a niche printer. and. The design of that also leads to that. This is an upside down HBOT design. So what does that mean? It, it's not Core XY. So while it may kind of move and on a first glance look like Core XY, it's not Core XY, it's a modified HBOT. It's actually one continuous belt for the entire path. It's actually a really cool belt system. And you may be wondering why the motion systems on the bottom and the beds up top. And that is because this printer folds. So think about it. What is one of those things you have to do after you build a printer like a Voron or something with Core XY or HBOT? You have to tension your belts, you have to de-rack it. If you had to collapse your motion system for XY every time you took this printer apart and then reset it up and square it up again, that would add a lot of complexity to the design. So by having the entire XY motion system be fully assembled and remained assembled, it makes tuning and calibrating and adjusting the printer a lot easier because it just remains consistent through tear up and tear down. The downside of that is now you need a bed that collapses, which is pretty easy. You just undo a knob and the bed folds down after you remove it. But that means the bed's upside down. Now you could do this printer with a traditional bed going down setup, but that would require a frame which is added complexity and would not compact down to the same package. So it prints upside down, which means if a print ever fails, it's falling down into your motion system. So this is also not a printer I would really run standalone by itself. It, it, when I've been printing with this, I, I have done some printing with it on the trip here, uh, just showing it off to family members and others while on vacation, I've printed some dino chip clips for movie night the other night. This is a printer you kind of want to be around while it's printing, just in case something does fail. You really don't want your print falling into the motion system. That's no bueno. Also, because of the nature of this type of style of printer, as you can see here, this tool head is extremely compact. The filament's coming in from the side, the nozzle's pointing up. This has a 90 degree bend in its filament path. If anyone's ever done any work with AC ducts or anything like that, you know every time you, you bend the flow, you're gonna lose flow essentially. Uh, so by having the filament path do that 90 degree, it adds a bunch of complexity. And while it is functional and it works pretty good with PLA and other filaments like that, one thing you can absolutely not run on this printer is anything abrasive. And that is because as that filament hits that 90 degree path, it is just gonna eat away that turn and it is gonna cause a lot of trouble. Also, jams on this, cold pulls, those really aren't a thing. I've been lucky so far. I haven't had any issues or any jams or any malfunctions, but if you try to run something like glow in the dark, carbon fiber or anything abrasive, even, even some heavy glitter filaments, um, I would be a little, I would not do it. I would just not risk it. You wanna run just regular filaments through this thing. And again, since it is Bowden, you, you can do TPU, uh, but again, it is a Bowden step, so you can have a little bit more finickiness to it, a little bit more tuning. Also, it is a glass bed, so you do have to be careful of it being a glass bed. You could break it if you're not careful with it. And PETG, make sure you put something on the glass bed. The last thing you wanna do is permanently bond some PETG to your glass bed and take a chunk out of it because it also has a heater in there. And I think that would pretty much kill your bed. So be very careful with PETG. I honestly wouldn't risk it. This is, this is a PLA machine in my opinion. Yes, you can print ABS on it if you enclose it, but that also requires you bring an enclosure of some sort or just put in like the closet of your hotel room and hope for the best or put a towel over it. Other things to keep in mind, uh, this is running Clipper. 
And with Clipper, there is a little bit of a workflow you have to work with. And part of that is the fact that you can't just take a thumb drive and throw a file on it. Uh, it can operate as a hotspot to connect to it. Uh, so if you have a laptop while you're traveling, you can connect to it over Wi-Fi. Uh, it does have ethernet. So if you wanna connect it to a router, you can go about that way. But if you're at a hotel and you don't have a computer with you, there's really no way to easily get files onto this. There is some hackery with Clipper where you could, are able to mount USB thumb drives. It does have a USB port on the side, but that isn't how it's set up from default. And you need a little bit, car, game on. You do need a little bit of Linux know-how to get that set up. So what I've actually done is before I left for this vacation, I went and pre-sliced a whole bunch of files and threw them on the controller here. So that way I have chip clips, toys, all, all your generic 3D prints you would want on a printer to show off a 3D printer already pre-sliced and pre-loaded so I could just select them on the touchscreen and I can run this standalone mode essentially. Also, the last thing I wanna to touch on is the price. This is definitely not a budget kit. And it's one of those things when you look at it, oh, it's a small printer, how does it cost so much? You have to understand that this design has been in the works for years now, uh, since the original design for the Positron was released. Originally, it was capstan's drive, now it's belt drive. There's been tons of revisions to the original design. So there's been a bunch of R&D work done. It is an open source project, so it's not like a company was paying for that R&D, but a lot of work has gone into this. And also part of that work was a lot of custom custom machined components. For this to work the way it does, and as good as it does, it requires custom machine components. You, you may be able to swap out some things with 3D printed parts, but you're definitely gonna take a hit in the just the ability of the machine itself and its capability. So for example, the arms that hold the bed, the cover plates, the bottom plates the electronics mount to, there is a lot of small little custom machine components on here, and those add to your bomb cost. Plus, it is a more niche design. They're not selling thousands and thousands and thousands of these, like you know a Prusa Mark IV or Bamboo, for example. So you have a small niche printer with a lot of custom components with not a huge volume of sales. That, the price is the price. It is what it is. And I think I did mention it just there, but kit, this is a kit. You cannot buy this printer pre-assembled. You buy it as a kit and you have to assemble it yourself. You are gonna have to print some parts, all the printed parts you see here. I printed myself uh, in some Polymaker ABS. The build itself is actually very enjoyable. I'll have it linked in the video description below, but I did a tandem build with Steve Builds. Uh, we streamed the builds on both my channel and his channel. I'll have the whole playlist linked below. But the build itself is actually really, not hard for a printer as small and as compact and as different than other 3D printers. Really, it was a very enjoyable build. They have a full documented set of instructions on how to put this together and it went together pretty well. There was a little bit of finickiness with the initial tuning and configuration. Uh, I'm just gonna chalk that up to being an early adopter of the kit. A lot of the hiccups we ran into have already been corrected. So if you wanna build one yourself, have at her, you'll have a fun time building. And honestly, that's who I think this printer is kind of for. Yes, it is a nice traveling printer. It fits really nicely in a protected case here. You could take this on a plane. This meets all carry-on requirements. I know people have carried this on planes already. Uh, so if you travel often and you need to bring a printer with you, this is an option. Now, yes, you could also just build a V0, for example, and put that in a Pelican case and take that with you. Uh, but this has more print volume. It's 180 by 180 by 165. So it does have that advantage there and it does pack down smaller. So you're living in a dorm. You don't wanna leave a 3D printer out all the time. You have kids around, cats around. You want something that you can pack up and put away and then pull out, set up when you need it. And when you're done with it, make it disappear. This may be an option. Or I think what this printer will probably be a really big hit with is people who just enjoy building 3D printers and tinkering. And I've already seen a bunch of custom mods for this and customization. People are having fun building these. So if you're like me and a good chunk of your enjoyment from 3D printing comes from just building and modding and tinkering with the 3D printers themselves, along with printing, this may be something you wanna look at. Now, this kit here, 
is from LDO Motors, and I do want to give a huge, massive shout out to LDO Motors for providing this kit for testing and evaluation, along with actually being involved with a lot of the development of the Positron and working with the Positron team. Um, shout out to Nomad, who is currently leading that project. They've put a ton of work into this kit to make it the best Positron kit out there. Now, there is also alternative versions of the Positron out there. Uh, so if you don't wanna go with an LDO kit, you technically can go and fully self-source your own if you have access to a machine shop. There's also some other third-party kits out there as well, if you wanna take a look at those. I don't have any first-hand experience with them personally, so I, I won't really comment on them. Um, but this is, if in my opinion, if you are gonna go with the Positron, take a look at the LDO kit as your first option because I had a ton of fun building this and uh, I'm sure this thing will get brought out a lot anytime I go anywhere and I want a 3D printer with me because it's, it's just nice. And the fact that it's all open, especially if you're bringing a printer somewhere to show off 3D printing, it is nice that it's all out in the open and everyone, you can see everything. And especially with the transparent bed, you can get a look, you can get a good look at how 3D printing is done. And you can also make sure your first layers are pretty good because uh, you need to have a good first layer with this machine. So yeah, that is the Positron. Um, I'm gonna pack it up now because it is lunchtime and I'm on vacation with the family and I'm gonna go do some barbecuing. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure you like that smash button on your way out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And if you wanna help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, links in the video description below. Some of them are affiliate links and some of them like gamer subs because it is hot out here and I wish I brought some with me. You can save 10% off your order using Canuck. I'm Taylor, the Canuck Creator. Hope you enjoyed the video today and now I'm gonna get back to my vacation. Cheers. Actually, I gotta pack this up first. Okay, now I'm ready to go barbecue. Cheers. <laughs>